Welcome. In this video, we are going to introduce block templates. Now, block templates add default blocks in the editor based on the different post type. So for example, for posts, you could have certain blocks display by default when you go to add a new post. You could do the same for pages and even custom post types. Now, it's important to point out that block templates are not theme templates. So if you've worked with theme development before and you know about index.php and page.php, these are not like this. In fact, as you've hopefully seen, all of the Gutenberg editor content is saved as the content. So in terms of theme templates, you'll be outputting the content. These block templates that we'll look at, which are set up with PHP in a functions.php file or something like that, control what appear in the editor by default when you add new content. So this will make more sense as we go along, but it's important to point out that these are not the same thing so we don't confuse them. I think one of the easiest ways to understand block templates is to see them in action. So here we have two block templates, one for posts and one for pages. So with this post one, when we pop this open to add a new post, it will automatically put all of these blocks on the page. It'll give us a subheadline with some text and an image, a separator cover image, another headline in three columns, and in our page template, we'll have the cover image, a subheadline, a two column thing here with a quote and some paragraph, and you'll see as it goes on. So this allows you to create really rich defaults that will help create even more consistent content and really nice looking stuff if you set these up for clients or for your theme. Now we can also optionally lock block templates in to prevent changes from happening, and there are different levels and ways that we could do this that we'll explore. Now to add block templates, we're going to hook into the WordPress filter register post type args. So this tells us that block templates are actually an argument of a post type. So when you set up a post type, if you've ever set up a custom post type from scratch in WordPress, like a custom event or product or projects, when you do that, one of the new options we have is a template argument. Now, since our examples are going to start off showing for working with default posts and pages, these are already set up. So we're gonna hook into this filter instead and just add our block templates to those initial post or page post types. And here's what that code will look like. We could see add filter register post type arg. So we hook into this and then we call our function, which will get two arguments, all of the previous arguments for whatever post type it was and the name of the post type itself. And you can see that we're running a conditional statement here and we're gonna say, hey, only for posts, go ahead and set up a template where in this case, we're displaying a cover image with full align. And this may not make total sense now, but it will as we go on. However, it should, as I explained what it is, kind of make sense and be pretty readable. We could see that of the args, we're adding on to that a new template one, and then we're gonna pass in an array of stuff and our full code examples will be a little bit more rich than this, but this is a great example to get started. Now, one thing you may be wondering is this core slash cover image. How did we know that's core and cover image? Well, this is going to be the naming convention. If you're adding a block from core, you'll say core, and then whatever the name of that block is, and I'll show you in a moment, and we'll look in more depth at how to find the name of core blocks, but also for third-party blocks. So if you have a plugin, that would be namespaced, and it wouldn't be core, it'd be the plugin name, and you could explore their code for how to pull that up, and that should all make sense once we get through this section. But just to show you real quick here, there is a folder in Gutenberg called core blocks, and it lists out all of the blocks by their code name. So we could see cover image listed here, columns, code, audio, button, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll look at how to go here, reference what we need and play around and make sure that we're getting the right stuff. But that's an important part of this process too. And once you learn how to do it for core, you should be able to go into any plugins that have blocks and figure out the same process as well there. So that's how we will get this one little bit of code here. The rest is all pretty much just boilerplate. Now, as mentioned, we also have a template lock option, and this will allow us to lock down all of the templates from being edited, or we could add insert as the value, which is the ability to add a default template, but people can still add and mix and match things from there. Now, when we get into template lock, it's also important to look at what happens when you add this to existing content because you may get unexpected results that make sense, but you might not have thought about. So we'll look at that in more depth as well, but that is a separate argument than the template itself, template lock, and you can set that to all or insert as we will look at. So 
That is a nice little introduction into block templates, what they are, how they work. And now in the next video, we will get deeper into the code that we actually need and look at some working examples here.